This is a fast travel ship, and in this video I'll teach you how to make one. Let's start with an example of how it could look once it's implemented. The captain says we're ready for departure, so I make my way to the cabin, where I press the button and before we know it, we're out at sea. I have no idea how long the journey will take, so I head up to the quarter deck, where we see that Captain Smith says that we should arrive tomorrow morning. So I decide to spend the rest of the day fishing. I really like to have this stage out at sea, because it feels more like a journey. But of course it's possible to skip it, as you'll see later in the video. I just find it relaxing, but the whole point of this video is to teach you how to implement a version that best fits your needs and desires. It's getting dark, so I quickly end up my fishing After which, I go to the cabin to get a good night's sleep. When I wake up, we've arrived at our destination, just like was promised. I then spend the day at the Mushroom Island, after which I decide to go back. This time I'll show you what it looks like if you skip the phase at sea, so you can decide for your own if you want to have it or not. Looks like we've arrived at our original starting location. And then now to the actual tutorial. This build combines the concept I talked about in my past few short videos. So if you're confused by anything I'm saying, I recommend you go watch the corresponding video. As some people might have figured out, this is actually an illusion that is created by building identical ships around two or more stasis chambers. Of course we still need to send a redstone signal to the other stasis chambers to make the teleportation work. Because the ships float out at sea, we can't really connect a redstone wire to it. This means that we don't really have a choice but to send the signal through the nether. People who have seen my long distance redstone video know it would be best to do this anyway, since the signal needs to travel a lot of blocks. As I've shown in the demonstration, I really like to use a bed to activate redstone, because it really adds to the illusion. If you let an observer face to a bed, both the start of your sleep and the ending will activate a redstone signal. Important to note is that if an ender pearl collides while you sleep, you won't be teleported, making the contraption fail. For the illusion to work the best we can, we need to time the redstone to take 51 redstone ticks, because a knight takes 50 and a half redstone ticks. Because I used 29 redstone ticks in the overworld to send and receive the signal to the nether, we still need to delay the signal for 22 redstone ticks in the nether. This means that we can use a maximum of 22 regular repeaters in the nether until we need to start using zero tick repeaters if we want our timing to match with us waking up. With all time and distance spent in the nether, we mustn't forget to load the chunks. We can do this by placing a chunk loader every third chunk, since we only need to load the chunks when we are sending a redstone signal however, we can actually use one time chunk loaders that are activated by the same redstone signal instead. This reduces lag when we are not using the ships, but it requires more resources, since we need to place one every other chunk for the redstone to be able to reach the next loader. On top of the chunk loading, we also want to send our travel signal to the nether. To do this, I first build a portal in the ship. I then link that portal to a portal above bedrock, to make the rest of the redstone less tedious. In this example, I use the classic ender pearl method to get above the nether, but you can use another one if you prefer. The next step is to do exactly the same on your destination. Once this is done, it's time to do the wiring between the two portals. I watch where the items end up, because that's where we'll need to place hoppers to catch them. Next to that spot, I place a dropper vader, that's there to send items back to the overworld. The hoppers feed their items into the dropper vader, which we detect using a comparator. We use that signal to send the item to the upper dropper, but also use this as the activation signal that we'll need to bring to the other portal. 
the upper dropper gets activated by the comparator signal of the other portal and vice versa. For the wires, I'd start with placing repeaters between them whenever it's necessary to renew the signal. But when I reach the other portal, I count the delay and make sure it equals the desired 22 ticks I was talking about earlier. Now that we've built the framework, we just need to build a ship around it. I won't be giving you guys a plug by plug tutorial of this, but if you really want one, let me know in the comments. After we've built our ship, we just need to build exactly the same ship at our destination. An easy way to do this is to use a mod like Lightmatica so you have ghost blocks to make sure you don't mess up. It's also perfectly possible to just take some screenshots from the different perspectives to base you on. Now we know how to make the most basic version, let's take time to look at a possible upgrade that requires significantly more resources. The plan is to throw the enderpearl at your starting location and then transport it all the way to the destination so that your friends can use the same ship without having to ever visit the destination. To increase the roleplay aspect, we can rename the enderpearl to be a ticket, but of course this is just some added flair. The simple but not recommended way to do this is to make a water slide to transport the pearl to your destination. This is only possible in the overworld because you need to place water and it is also very slow, so I would only do it for a very short journey. The easiest way to make such a slide is to first make a water stream by going down a block every 7th block. To make the ender pearl float, we need to have a water source block on top of a soul sand block beneath the stream, so we go down two blocks and place a soul sand block there. On top of the soul sand we can create a water source block by placing and destroying kelp. The more complicated way is to first remove all the randomness of the pearl using an ender pearl aligner like the one from Ojapa Terrorista. When this is done, we can propel it forward using slime blocks. To save travel time, we can then launch it into the nether to do the rest of the transport there. If you do this, you need to take into account a weird behavior of ender pearls passing through portals. If an ender pearl passes through a portal from the overworld, it needs to spend at least 17 seconds in the nether before it can enter another portal back to the overworld. If it tries to enter a portal before that, the timer resets as you can see here. Whichever method you end up using, I highly recommend you time how long the journey of the ender pearl takes, so you can place a timer at the original location. This way you know when you can actually use the ship. That's it for the tutorial. I hope I've showed you enough so you can start making your own version. As you've probably realized, you can really give your own spin on the concept. Maybe you build a very large ship with lots of room so it can be used by a lot of people. Or maybe you make one with multiple different destinations. Or you decide to go a more modern route and build a cruise ship. Or you go even more extreme and decide to build a fast travel spaceship above the nether instead. The possibilities are endless. And I'm really curious what you guys come up with. So definitely let me know in the comments if you end up making your own version. This was my first ever longer video and I really enjoyed making it. But I also realize it has many flaws. So if you were confused by anything, don't be afraid to ask.